Sitting in the middle of North Korea's capital is a building that towers over the rest of downtown Pyongyang. Construction on it first began in 1987 and it was supposed to be the tallest building in Asia. But as of today, it sits completely empty. So why was this project started in the first place? Well, in 1986, the thousand foot tall skyscraper was envisioned to serve as the crowning achievement of President Kim Il-sung's regime. And it's probably no coincidence that earlier that year, a private South Korean construction company had just finished building the Westin Stamford in Singapore, making it the world's tallest hotel. So not to be outdone, the North Korean government under Kim Il-sung announced plans for a hotel unlike any other. At over a thousand feet in height, the hotel was to be more than 40% taller than the Westin, featuring over 3,000 rooms, five rotating restaurants, and more than 100 floors. According to one North Korean official, the Ryungyang Hotel would represent the highest level of excellence in the world. So ground broke on the hotel in 1987, with Kim's regime vowing to complete it in just three years. But after growing delays, immense costs, and poor construction design, opening day had to be pushed to 1992, which was just in time for the 80th birthday of the great leader. And to make sure it got done this time, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea poured a staggering 2% of the entire country's GDP into the hotel's construction per year. Three years and $750 million later, the hotel still remained unfinished, standing as an empty concrete shell over a country now embroiled in a complete economic meltdown following the collapse of the Soviet Union. So with the regime utterly bankrupt on the verge of slipping into a crippling famine that would last four years, work on the hotel came to a complete halt. The unfinished building was left abandoned without windows, fixtures, or furnishings for the next 16 years. What was once marketed as the pride and joy of North Korea's centrally planned economy now became an international embarrassment. Rather than finish the building, the government tried to ignore it. So. What's the status today? Well, a second attempt to resume work on the hotel began in 2008, with the government setting a new deadline of 2012, right in time for the 100th birthday of Kim Il-sung. And while glass windows for the hotel were finally installed in 2011, the building itself still remains empty. And after missing yet another deadline for completion in 2013, the North Korean government has now chosen to convert the building into a giant propaganda billboard with the hotel serving no other purpose than to blast state propaganda across its LED screens. So what does the story of all this mean for us today? For starters, it's probably one of the most shocking examples of how poorly a government can allocate resources. North Korean central planners promised to build a hotel unlike any other. Instead, they bankrupted their country trying to construct a hotel that would never serve a single guest. And actually finishing it would probably take another $2 billion, which would represent about 5% of the country's GDP. The hotel demonstrates that there is no greed quite so damaging to a people as the kind demonstrated by a political leader driven by hubris who pays no real price for being wrong.